Hey guys, this is the Balkan Architect and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this realistic wooden grain on your wooden elements in Revit and it will actually, the direction of these grains will actually follow the direction of the beams that it's on. Now this will be like a post-production tutorial because I'm going to be doing this in Photoshop but this model or this rendering is actually from Revit and if I open up this model this is the model I used and if you're interested in how to create this truss I've got links to a couple of tutorials in which I show you how to model trusses in Revit but this will be just a Photoshop tutorial and you can always use renderings from other software like SketchUp, 3ds Max or whatever. Now the reason why I'm doing this in Photoshop is because it's a lot easier to do this realistic grain later on in Photoshop than in Revit or any other program. So if I turn this on, this is what I started from and this is the end result. It looks way better and if you zoom in you can see the actual grains are following the direction of the beams. Now I'm going to be using this image over here. This is without any post-production and if I kind of, okay let's minimize Revit here, you can see here I have this image that I'm using, this is just a wood image, this is what they downloaded from the internet and the link to this basically wood texture and a bunch of other textures will be in the link in the description. So I'm just going to move this over in Photoshop and let's just maximize this and let's just place it like this on the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some adjustments and I'm not going to be using these adjustment layers. I'm going to go directly here into image, adjustments and you can see you can't really edit anything. And that's because it's just a special kind of layer and how you can get rid of that the quickest way for me is just use an eraser and then you get this warning. You just go OK and now that is gone so if you go here into image and adjustments you can actually use the adjustments so I'm just going to use brightness and contrast and bring the contrast up a bit perhaps bring the brightness down a bit and just go OK so now I'm going to leave this and I'm going to duplicate it so I'm just going to go right click on this layer go duplicate layers just hit OK and then I'm going to just turn off visibility for this bottom layer because I want to save it and use it afterward. And the good thing about having a texture like this where you have kinda different little wooden strips is because you can use each of these strips for each of these elements over here and every, one, every element will have kinda different wood grain and it will look way more realistic. So. Let's do this long bottom one first because that's the hardest one. So I'm just going to use this rectangle tool and you just select kind of like this a bit on the inside. You go all the way out over here and here I kind of capture this black part. So I'm just going to call the control or go here to and select this subtract from section but I prefer holding just the control and then I'm just going to subtract a couple of millimeters so we don't catch that black part. Okay, now I'm just going to inverse the selection. So just right click, go select inverse and then hit delete. So this is what I'm left with. And I'm just going to, okay, let's deselect. So right click, deselect. And now I need to make this a bit longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of move it to the side over here duplicate this layer, so just go duplicate layer, OK, move that layer over to the side, but you can see this wouldn't really look right, so I'm just going to flip this layer, so just go edit, transform, flip horizontal, and you get this, and it matches a lot better, and then you kind of move it like this, and I'm just going to be using the eraser here, maybe a bit smaller, and then just do something like this, so it looks like it's matching, and that looks quite alright. Now I'm just going to select both of these layers by holding either the shift or the control to select both of them. You right click and you go merge layers. So now these layers are merged and then I'm just going to go here and hold control T and this is for the transform. So I'm just going to kind of transform this and kind of match this beam I have over here. So let's 
try that and you can see it's kind of bigger so let's scale this up a bit yeah maybe this is too large yeah let's try something like this okay this looks about right so first I'm going to go to fill or opacity it doesn't really matter let's use fill and I'm going to bring it down all the way to 50% and then here I'm going to go to multiply so your blending options set to multiply and fill to 50% and don't worry if it looks kinda too bland or dark currently we're going to fix that later so you just go here finish to make it stick there and then you use this here rectangular lasso tool now if you've got just this lasso tool to select long press or hold the, the click and you go polygonal lasso tool so you kinda just zoom in over here you select one of these and then you go to the corner then you go all the way out but if you if it's kinda too zoomed in and you can't really zoom out you just hit the minus key on your numerical keyboard and it will zoom out and then just hit the plus on your numerical keyboard and it will zoom in so let's just select this and let's finish the selection and you get something like that now you inverse the selection just right click select inverse you hit delete and there you go so we have this part and you just right click and deselect now let's do the bottom part over here so I'm going to go again here to this wood grain right click duplicate layer OK turn this layer on and let's select other one perhaps this one so once you've selected it you just go right click select inverse hit delete and you're left with this so you right click deselect and then just hit control T to transform but you can see here I kinda left a little bit of this dark part so let's delete that kinda like that now the thing about this one is it needs to be warped a bit so let me just deselect this and now let's make it warped because it needs to fit this here angle so you just go here to file edit you find transform and then find distort so I'm just going to move this up like this and move this corner up like this yeah that looks fine perhaps this thing yeah kinda move it like that warp it make it look like it's in perspective and you just hit finish you go control T to select it and then you just rotate it you place it over there kinda rotate it a bit make sure it matches everything yeah kinda like that and then you just stretch it in place so you go over here you place it there you scale it yeah you get something that looks like this now you go here and for the blending options go to multiply here for the fill let's type in 50 percent go finish over here and then let's just trim it in place so again use this polygonal lasso tool you hit here select this kinda hit minus on your numerical keyboard a couple of times to zoom out you zoom in by hitting the plus you go over here minus plus to zoom in and you select it you go right click select inverse oops right click select inverse delete deselect okay so this is what you end up with now you do kinda the same thing for this and this and as far as these small ones are concerned you don't really have to do kinda two for the angle so I'm just going to do one over here quickly so you can see it so I just right click duplicate layer hit OK turn it on let's select one of these perhaps this one so you just use the rectangle tool kind of select it yeah let's select it like this right click select inverse delete right click deselect 
and then you just go control T you kinda just rotate it and place it over here so this looks about right you just go to multiply put the fill to 50% you hit finish and then you just use this rectangle selection tool or polygonal selection tool to select the whole thing so you kinda go down select here go up and you finish the selection you go select inverse and you hit delete right click deselect and you get something that looks like this now I'm just going to skip the rest of this I had because you get the point and it's just repetitive and then you get something that looks like this now this is a bit dark and you can't really see it good so let's just enhance this a bit so the first thing I want to do is I want to enhance just this truss so I want it to be kinda brighter and pop out of the image a bit more because let's be honest that's that's the reason why we're doing this image so how to do that I'm just going to turn off this background layer or our image layer and you get left you'll, you're left with this just the textures we use and then I'm going to use this magic selection tool so just go here magic selection tool and you select everything outside make sure this is selected so you can add to selection and then you select all of these and once you've done this just go right click select inverse so now only our truss textures are selected and once you've done that you just go here to brightness and contrast adjustment layer and hit that and you basically open up just the adjustment layer for this here truss and then let me turn this on and now if I go to brightness you can see I kinda brighten everything up so let's just do a bit better brightness and now let's do brightness and contrast for the whole thing but I don't like to use brightness and contrast only for that I like to use one of these kind of filters so let's use color lookup open this up stretch it or place it in front of everything so over all the layers and I'm just going to go here and find this T orange plus yeah this this really pops and then let's take it down a notch let's put it at I don't know 65 percent yeah and as you can see now everything looks better and again you can scroll down to this adjustment layer over here that's only for the truss and you can kinda adjust the truss brightness to what you wish okay so that's pretty much it for this tutorial thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this tutorial i hope it was helpful and if you have any questions comments or suggestions for future tutorials please leave it in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day